Hi guys, thanks for coming back to another video. Um, I wanted to share a message that the Lord gave me in the middle of the night the other night. Um, this would have been August the 12th, coming into the morning of the 13th. Um, I don't have the time identified. Uh, I, I must have just uh, went back to bed without looking to see when it was, but it was in the middle of the night. Uh, the Lord is speaking about a specific day here. I don't know what day this is, but um, but here is uh, here's the message. Let's just go ahead and pull it up. So August the 12th into the 13th, uh, many will recall this day in history. It will be a day to remember. My love, listen, you shall be taken. There are places you must go for protection of others. When your name is called, you shall come forth at such speed. No man know the day or hour, but my love, you have been warned by the eternities. Keep me near, my child, and I shall fulfill all that I have given unto you. Shalom, my love. And that was the uh, that was the end of the message. Okay, so um, so intriguingly, uh, the Lord uh, gave me something here that really sparked my interest, uh, and thankfully, uh, He's given me Scripture to back it up. Um, no man know the day or the hour. Of course, we know that Scripture, um, but it says, "You, have, but my love, you have been warned by the eternities." Uh, so. I found that to be quite interesting, um, but he did give me a scripture, uh, thank goodness he did, um, where um, I could find what he was talking about here. So in Psalm 139, of course I have the New King James Version and the Amplified pulled up. It just seems to be uh, beneficial uh, at times with some of these scriptures to give us a little bit more insight. Uh, but down in verses 15 and 16, um, he said something here that he pointed me to in regards to that. It says, um, oh, let's read it from the Amplified. It says, My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought as if embroider, embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before they even took shape, when as yet there was none of them. So this day spoken of here, um, this day spoken of here in this particular, uh, in this particular scripture, uh, in this particular message, I mean, right here, this day that he's speaking of here, um, it was already written out and provided. I mean, it was already provided back in eternity past somewhere. God wrote in his book. It said it was his book. Um, all of our days before we ever even lived them out. We didn't even live not, not one day of them out. Um, so this is what he is speaking of here. You have been warned by the eternities. Um, and I found that to be pretty interesting. So guys, you can go and, and search that information out yourself. Uh, Psalm 139, um, 15 and 16. Um, I found that to be very interesting. And I'm thankful that he gave me uh, that information. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to speak about um, was that I had an experience in the spirit that I believe the Lord um, is wanting um, us to discuss and know about. Um, this was on the date of 813 as well. And I was just in prayer with the Lord and he um, bid me to come into the spirit again. Um, I will read to you what I have written uh, for my journal. Um, although this is some communication be between him and I. Um, but I, you know, a lot of it carries on to all of you as well. So, um, so 813 in the spirit, um, I was just in prayer with the Lord at first and he was telling me, look up, look up, I say, for your redemption draw nigh. Let me change this image for just a minute because 
this is what we're going to be speaking about here. Let me just pull that up a little bit. There we go. So he said, look up. Look up, I say, for your redemption draweth nigh. I am in the night, in the day, in the cloud. I am there for you. I will see you soon. I will carry you through. I will endure you or I will ensure you are safe. I will ensure you are loved. I will take care of you. I will provide for you. I will ensure you know who I am and what I will do. He said, these promises are yours, my love, to keep. I give them unto you. Um, you know, he is so gracious and kind. He is. It just if you seek him and get near him and just stay in his presence, he will just he will just talk to you and tell you things. Um, he did bid me to come into the spirit. And as I entered into the spirit, now, mind you, it's been a while since I've been in the spirit. Um, I've had a lot going on in my life here and I've really uh, not been entering into the spirit. Uh, but this day I did, and um, I am just on the other side of the veil by the water, the tree, and the path. This is the same entrance that I came in that I did the first time I came into the Spirit, if you guys recall those videos. Um, but if for some reason it seemed so far away from me, uh, and it must be because I hadn't been there in so long. I moved toward that tree by the water that I sat at, waiting on the Lord to arrive. It was here that I heard him call me Ariel. Um, I stand here looking upon the waters, and the waters almost look like a light gray lavender in color. Um, they are still moving from my left to my right, and they're going under the bridge. I see someone coming over the bridge, and I turn toward them. It is the Lord. And I just put my head down and cry. My Lord is coming for me again. There he is. I just love him so. How can I allow earthly things to hinder this? This is where my thought was going. Um, so many attacks have come against me lately that, you know, these earthly things have been hindering my my seeking him as closely as I was. Um, and so my thought turned to that. But here he is coming again for me. Um, he is so faithful and he is so true. He said, uh, no, he said, my dove, I have come to show you something. And he turns again on the path and I follow. And we go over the bridge and into the area where the bush was that hid that scroll. I don't know if you all remember that video. And the path that housed the tree with the fruit. And we again walk straight along the path, not turning to the right where that big house was or the boat. We didn't turn there. We went straight back to where that big white building was again with the archway entrances in the bottom. And we enter in and I see the glass bubble on the floor. Uh, I don't know if you all recall from the older videos. We went up to that and I was asked to look into it. Um, and I saw the earth uh, the last time. And so I see this again. We approach it and in silence we both look down into it. I see clouds clearing so I'm able to see something a bit more clearly but I'm still having difficulty looking to see what it is. And I said, Lord, what is it that I am supposed to be seeing? And he said, keep looking, and he pointed back. I hesitantly again looked over the edge into the glass. I see darkly something boiling. Um, this liquid is at the edge and about to boil over. Uh, is this hell? I was wondering, uh, is this lava? Um, what, what was this? Um, it was too dark for me to see. It wasn't clear and lit. It was, a, it was dark. I said, Lord, what am I looking at? Um, and he said, a boiling pot. That's what he told me. He said, it is time for all to recognize where we are in timing now. I said, Lord, what am I to know about this? 
He said that all will be taken into account, my child. That all will be seen through the looking glass of time to see what is in their hearts. It can be seen, my child, for it is written upon the walls. He then said, my child, listen, when all is right in the world, none of this will need to exist. All evil will be gone. All treacherous actions will be but a memory. But until that time, there is a selection that will occur. I asked, is this Matthew 24, Lord, with the sheep and the goats? He said, my dove, it is much more than that. There are those upon this earth that do not belong to me. Not all are of me. So I asked him a few questions in regards to, um, in regards to um, the scripture of the boiling pot. And I am understanding that he was leading me to Jeremiah 1. He then said, come with me. There are other things I want to show you. And we turn and walk out the right side of this building onto a path. I have not been out this direction before. The white stones are on the path. The day seems clear and bright. The Lord is quiet and I am following. Where are we going, Lord? To the ridge here. I can see the mountains and ridges all around us. My eyes are drawn to the horizon atop the mountains. You see, he said, in life there are mountains and valleys. A top one means something far different than that below. While all may be on a path provided, it can be difficult at times. You, my love, were made for such a time as this. And our hand is upon your life, helping you along the way. Can you see this? I said, yes, Lord. I say this to show you that you have overcome all this. And he pointed down and up the mountains and valleys. You are climbing that far hill now, and atop it will be victory. The race will be won. I look around where I saw him point. He said to me, don't slow now, my child. You are nearly there. Many will walk the way that you have and find victory themselves. So finish the race. So the Lord is encouraging me. And I really feel like it's not just me that he's encouraging. He's encouraging all of those that are out there doing the things that he has asked them to do. He's saying, don't give up. Continue to continue to move forward. Continue to press in. Continue to take that step. Continue to keep your eyes focused upon him because we are nearly there. We are nearly there. So I wanted to bring that information to you. Uh, I felt like it was something that he wanted me to share, but it's also something that I would like to talk about this, uh, this boiling pot. Now, I made mention that um, he had uh, br brought me to Jeremiah 1. And um, Jeremiah 1 is talking about Jeremiah being called a priest uh, and a prophet. And um, it is speaking on some things here uh, that the Lord has actually spoke to me about many years ago. And I'm not going to get into all of that at this time, but I would like to get down into this part right here um, where the Lord is saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? Um Mm, let's start up here. And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have I have this day set over, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of the almond tree. 
Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Okay, so the branch of an almond tree, um, we want to, this is actually a rod. Um, it is a rod right here. And the Lord called the Lord called me a rod about two two and a half years ago. Um, I was just in prayer, and then all of a sudden, He said, "You are a rod." And I thought, "What in the world are you talking about?" Uh, I had no idea what He was talking about, but this is what He's talking about. Um, it's a branch, um, and if you go back into some of those uh, root of Jesse. Um, videos you can learn a little bit more about what he told me uh, at that time then the Lord said to me you have seen well for I am ready to perform my word and the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying what do you see and I said I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north then the Lord said to me out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land for behold I am calling all of the families of the kingdoms of the north says the Lord and they shall come and each one set his throne against the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against all its walls all around and against all the cities of Judah I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness because they have forsaken me burned incense to other gods and worship the works of their own hands therefore prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you do not be dismayed before their faces lest I dismay you before them for behold I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Okay, so guys, take some time to dig into um, what the Lord is saying here. He is showing us, he said in the spirit experience, he is showing us um, about the timing that we are in at this time. He said it is time for all to recognize where we are in timing now. Okay, um, and this is the scripture um, that he led me to. Um, something else that I want to uh, show you also is in Jeremiah 6 where it's talking about the impending destruction from the north. Uh, it goes into great detail uh, in regards to this. Uh, it's saying, uh, it hurts my heart when I, when I read and hear about Jerusalem. Um, but go through and read all of this. I was going to read it out, but I don't think I, I need to do that. I think you guys can go to Jeremiah 6. And dig into this um, definitely pull up your amplified because it does ha it does give you a lot of information on that so now when the Lord had given me that message and he was talking about this day in history um, I was led to um, pull something up and I went into Bible Gateway uh, understanding that we are in the month of Elul um, which is the sixth month um, and so what I did is I, I just pulled up six months and um, I, I just started looking at some of these scriptures that kept pulling up into the six month and um, I was drawn to Ezekiel 1 uh, Ezekiel 8 verse 1 and it does talk about the sixth month some of these talk about the sixth year that that came up and so I really wasn't interested in sixth year I was interested in sixth month because the Lord was talking about um, this day in history will be one that people will remember and so um, thinking back to what the Lord has shown us in our own journals and studies in the past um, that things happen you know on specific days and what have you I said okay well here we are in a lull so this is the reason why I pulled up six month 
this is the scripture that um, I really felt drawn to so I just I'm going to go ahead and pull it up we'll go ahead and do the amplified with it as well um, <clears throat> but there is something here um, that I wanted to um, that I wanted to um, to, to read to you let's just let's just read it over and it came to pass in the sixth year in the sixth month and on the fifth day of the month so that would be a lull five right as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me that the hand of the Lord God fell upon me there and then I looked and there was a likeness like one like the appearance of fire from the appearance from the appearance of his waist and downward fire and from his waist upward like the appearance of brightness like the color of amber he stretched out the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my hair and and the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem to the door of the north gate of the inner court where the seat of the image of jealousy was which provokes to jealousy and behold the glory of God of Israel was there like the vision that I saw in the plain okay so I'm gonna go right over into um, the Amplified because I want us to understand what he's talking about and he put forth the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my head and the spirit lifted me up between the heavens and the earth and brought me to and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem to the entrance of the door of the inner court which faces toward the north where was the seat of the idol image of jealousy which provokes jealousy and behold there was the glory of God of Israel who had loved and chosen them like the vision I saw in plain then he the spirit said to me son of man now lift up your eyes to the north so I lifted up my eyes toward the north and behold the north of the altar gate was that idol image of jealousy in the entrance furthermore the spirit said to me son of man do you see what they are doing the great abominations that the house of Israel is committing here to drive me far from my sanctuary but you shall again see greater abominations and he brought me to the door of the court and when I looked behold there was a hole in the wall then he said to me son of man dig now in the wall and when I had dug in the wall behold there was a door and he said to me go in and see the wicked abominations that they do here so I went in and saw their pictures of every form of creeping things and loathsome, and loathsome beasts and all of the idols of the house of Israel painted round about on a wall now guys this is this is part of what I want you to see um, the Lord said in the spirit he said um, it is time for us to recognize where we are in the timing and I said Lord what am I to know about this and he said that all will be taken into account my child that all will be seen through the looking glass of time to see what is in their hearts it can be seen my child for it is written upon the walls so it's not only written upon the walls of our heart but it's written upon the walls of the sanctuaries of what he's saying in here so I went in and saw there were pictures of every form of creeping things and loathsome beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel painted round about on the wall and there stood before these pictures 70 men of the elders of the house of Israel and in the midst of them stood Jezaniah the son of Shaphan the scribe with every man his censer in his hand and a thick cloud of incense was going up in prayer to these their gods and then he said to me son of man have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark every man in his secret chamber of idol pictures for they say the Lord does not see us the Lord has forsaken the land let me scroll this up a little bit more 
He also said to me, Yet again you shall see greater abominations, which they are committing. Then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the, of the Lord's house, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz, a Babylonian god who was supposed to die annually and subsequently be resurrected. Then he then said the spirit to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Yet again you shall see greater abominations that they are committing. And he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the bronze altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs to the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they were bowing themselves toward the east and worshiping the sun. Then the Spirit said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it too slight a thing to the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they commit here, that they must fill the land with violence and turn back afresh to provoke me to anger? And behold, they put the branch, they put the branch to their nose, actually before their mouths, in superstitious worship. Therefore I will deal in wrath. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. So this is what the Lord led me to when he led me to look up sixth month. And this is what he led me to, this particular scripture. And it is linking, uh, linking the walls. Um, something else I wanted to point out. Um, I think this is the scripture, Isaiah 49. Is this it? Yes, God will remember Zion. Um, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hands and your walls are continually before me. So, Guys, we have we have great things getting ready getting ready to happen. And what the Lord is wanting us to understand is the timing of what we have going on right now. Um, I had someone send me some information, um, a, a link to to a video, I believe, um, that I've not had an opportunity to watch at this point um, about something about the peace agreement possibly getting ready to be signed. Um, if you read that. If you read um, Jeremiah 6, let's just pull that up. I, I should have read it to begin with. Um, you're going to see that he's talking about they say peace, peace. Uh, let's just read this right here. Uh, where is that peace, peace? It's down here, I believe it is. See, he's talking about um, incense being being burned to um, other other people. Here it is. Thus says the Lord of hosts, and they shall thoroughly glean as a vine the remnant of Israel, as a grape gatherer. Put your hand back into the branches. That's what the Lord said. To whom shall I speak and give warning, that they may hear? Indeed, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot give heed. Behold, the word of the Lord is a reproach to them, and they have no delight in it. Therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord, and I am weary of holding it in. I will pour it out on the children outside, and on the assembly of young men together, for even the husband shall be taken with the wife, the aged with him who is full of days, and their houses shall be turned over to others, fields and wives together, for I will stretch my I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord, because from the least of them given to the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness, and from the prophet even to the priest, every one deals falsely. They have also healed the hurt. They have also healed the hurt of my people slightly, saying, "Peace, peace," when there is no peace. 
Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were all not they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. At the time I punish them, at the time I punish them, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. So guys, oh, I'm telling you, please go in and read Jeremiah 6. I was going to read the whole thing, but I'm just not going I'm not going to be able to do that. But guys, I wanted to get this message to you. I wanted to tell you that um, the message that I received in the middle of the night and then also the, the boiling pot, uh, uh, what was shown to me in the Spirit by the Lord. This is the timing that we're in. I think many of us can see it at this time. Um, please pray for your brothers and sisters in, uh, in Israel at this time. Um, pray that they turn. Pray that they can be covered under under his wing um, great things are getting ready to occur so guys i just want to say thank you for coming back to another video god bless you and may the lord keep you in all things bye